Hi, welcome to this quick video with regards to how to pick a good stock to buy. And my name is Jack Wong and welcome on board. Uh, this presentation is proudly brought to you, brought to you by online trading for profits.com and also empowerrangers.net. How many of you actually experienced this before where you have so many stocks to choose and you don't know which one you pick? And how many of you actually realize that there should be a systematic way for you to pick a good stock to buy as quickly as possible? And how about if you can do this in just merely 15 minutes a day, which is 1, 5, 15 minutes a day? Are you excited? So if you are, then I would like to invite you to take a look of this video in which I'm going to show you step by step to find a good stock to buy. It's not proof foolproof, let me warn you first, there's no guarantee as you can tell in the stock market and what I'm sharing with you requires you to practice. There's a saying that practice actually makes improvement, okay? I was told that practice makes perfect, um, not very true for me because if you said you are the best already, there's no incentive for you to move along. So let me give you the legal disclaimer first since this content relates to trading and I'm showing you because everything that I'm going to share with you is for educational purposes only. We are not here giving you any form of investment advice. Okay, so if you agree, let's begin with this discussion. There are actually, actually about eight steps that you can, you can use and I call them eight rules. The reason why I use the word rule is that you are able to follow them without any objection, or without any subjectivity in play, without thinking that you are able to change the rule, as such and etc, etc, okay? So these are my eight rules for you. Okay, to pick a stock that has good fundamental, number one, you can of course find your own list or you can actually obtain a stock from IBD Investor Business Daily 50. There's IBD list 50 that you can pick. Two, I'm looking at learning estimates. Three, number of analysts. Four is earnings surprise. Five, the fifth rule is EPS trends. Six will be growth estimate. Seven, ROE, which is a ratio. Number eight is PEG ratio, PET ratio. Okay, so let me go through these eight steps one by one. And I'm going to show you an example how you can find such information totally free of charge. Okay, are you excited? Let's begin. Okay, rule number one. First of all, you may want to subscribe to IBD50, which is the monthly service. You have to pay about $28 a month, um, US dollars, whilst, while, while it's a chargeable service. What you will need to do is to obtain the list and you are able to choose 50 stocks. And in this, in this case, what I want you to do is to pick a stock that has an EPS of at least 90 and relative strength LS of at least 90. So if you are considering subscribing to IBD50, uh, probably you may want to experience this. So for the first few months, maybe it's worth pursuing, okay? Subscribing for the list. So as of 21st December 2013, these are just a few stocks for which satisfying the, I mean, the, for which they satisfy the IBD50, uh, the EPS and RS requirements. We have NUS, KORS, BIIP, CLG, and PCLN. Once again, please remember that I'm showing you this for illustrative purposes only. You are reminded that you have already read the legal disclaimer. Okay, so please understand this. So where is the IBD50 list? So this is a snapshot to basically tell you that, okay, this is IBD50. And the thing is that you can actually go to the IBD50 site, and the link is actually below, whereby it shows you five stocks free of charge. The best, the, the thing is that you must understand that these five stocks may not be what we are looking for. Okay, so the thing is that, for example, we need to look for the EPS and RS of at least 90. None of these dots fall within the range. So free doesn't mean that you are able to get the information you want. So better still, you should pay for it. Okay? Now, assuming that you have found the stock, and in this case, I'm going to use Priceline.com PCL and as a demo. Now, rule number two sets. Uh, you have to check the earnings estimate and the average estimate from Yahoo Finance. Yahoo Finance, as you know, is, is a free service. What you need to do is to check the current quarter and the next quarter, and both must be at least three cents each. That is to say that the company that you are looking for must be making some form of money, right? 
So this is where you can find the the numbers. First of all, you go to Yahoo Finance. You pick the stock by keying the stock ticker symbol. Go to the left hand side and the list estimates. Okay. Once you click this, you'll be able to find the average estimate. As you can see for Priceline.com, the current year is forty one point one, and the next year is fifty point nine two. But this is called the yearly number. How about the current quarter? Current quarter is eight point two five, and next quarter is seven point zero eight. So in other words, the stock has fulfilled this rule. Rule number three says that you need to look at how many analysts are doing their job from Yahoo Finance. If the analyst number is less than three, forget it. If this is between three and nine, that's ideal. But too many may be a problem. So if there are more than nine analysts, you need to understand that there might be some problem, because don't know why this is just a gut feeling that more than nine is not very good. So between three and nine would be ideal. But you know what? If it's more than nine, you can still look at that. You can still say that the rule has passed, but you need to watch out. So for Priceline.com being a big stock, S and P five hundred, as you can tell, so the analysts involved are definitely more than three. So for that part, for that matter, rule number three, Priceline.com passed. So rule number four talks about earnings surprise. Earnings surprise basically is the is the mistake made by the analyst when they analyze the stock. They think the earnings will be there, but the company announces an earning that is much more than. What the analyst has have have has have、uh, have done. So in other words, the analysts have actually make mistakes, and we want to look for this kind of positive earnings surprise. While zero means no mistake is still fine, we still want to look at positive earnings surprise. So that means if the analyst is looking at this level, the company announced the earning better than the analyst estimate. So we need to look at the last two quarters. With positive earnings supply surprises, if there are four consecutive four quarters with positive earnings surprise, even better. That means the analysts have been making mistake again and again and again. So let's look at Priceline.com. As you can see, for the last quarter, four quarters, guess what happened? Every single quarter, the analysts make mistake, and the earnings surpass what the analysts have said. So that stock. Priceline.com has met rule number four. Rule number five says the EPS trend should be increasing or at least stay the same from bottom to top. In other words, we want to see the earning per share is going up. Okay, so for that matter, what we want to be precisely looking at is to compare the current year's EPS estimates and also next year's EPS estimates. Okay,、um, to look at this with the reading. Ninety days ago. So let me show you the chart. How does it look like? So as you, as you can see, ninety days ago, current year's estimate is only forty point zero nine, and now forty one point one. So that means there's improvement. For the、uh, next year's estimate, forty nine point two eight. That was ninety days ago, and fifty point nine two. That is the current estimate. So therefore, Priceline dot com has passed rule number five. Rule number six. Talks about the growth estimate for next year and also the growth estimate for the next five years must be at least twenty percent. Now here is the deal: if the reading is very close to twenty, we do need to look at the earnings surprise because we do allow some form of、uh, adjustment based on the earnings surprises. Now for this matter, let me show you how it works. Now Priceline.com next year's. Um, next year's estimate is twenty three point nine percent, so it has it is above twenty percent. But you can see that the next five years was nineteen point five three, so it is like forty. You say point four seven percent short of twenty percent. But if you remember rule number, rule number, let me see rule number four, we talk about earnings surprise. You can see that seven point one percent. The earnings surprise was positive seven point one percent. So if we come back to rule number six, if we say that plus or minus seven point, plus or minus nineteen, using nineteen point five three percent, plus or minus seven percent, we should be able to hit the twenty percent bar. So in other words, we can say, well, you know what, next five years, earning estimates surpass twenty percent. So rule number six arguably has passed, because if you set a very stringent way. 
it might be the case that you can't find any stock. So this room for improvement adjustment is required so that you allow some stocks to fall into your baskets. Rule number seven, which says that the ROE, which is a return on equity, which is a financial ratio, must be at least 15% or else we'll reject the stocks. So let's look at Priceline.com again. Now for you to look at ROE, you need to go to key statistics. Just now we were at analyst estimates. Now we are at key estimates. So right below you should see ROE, which is 35.7%. So you see rule number seven for price nine is passed. Final rule. Now this rule is important because we are going to grade the, give the stock a, a grade. Okay, so how do we grade the stocks? Uh, we use PEG ratio, price earning growth ratio, which is also available in Yahoo Finance. So if we see the PEG is below 1, we say the stock is cheap. Cheap means compared with the value, the stock price is cheap, so there's room for growth. So we'll give the stock a grade A. If the PEG is between 1.01 and 1.5, we'll still say that it is a good buy because it is not so cheap compared to the A stock, yet it is alright. If the PEG is between 1.51 and 2, we say that the stock is getting expensive for the value we get. So it's not so good, yet it is still a buyable stock. But if PEG is way above 2.0, sorry, we'll just ignore the stock, we'll reject it right away. So here's the deal. If we have found 10 stocks, some are grade A, some are grade B, some are grade C, what do we do? We will tend to buy the grade A stock first. Given the size of our portfolio, I mean if you risk let's say 3%, 2% or 1% of your equity, you will want to buy the grey stock first. Only if you have finished buying the grey A, you look for B and C, so there is a step process in between. Okay, so once you have found the list, for example Priceline.com, what do you do next? Uh, before that, let me show you the, the, the the, the, the table, you can see PEG for Priceline.com is 1.48, so we'll say that PCLN is a grade B stock. Okay, so this is what the next step should be in my opinion. Once you have picked the stock, are you going to buy? Not really. Okay, why? Let me think about, let me, let me think about it. If I want to buy a stock, using the fundamental analysis, I've found PCLN for example. How about looking at the chart and let the chart Tell, tell us when to get in and how do we determine the stop loss. In other words, when we know the entry price, when we know the stop loss, we know how much is the risk and how many shares we can buy. Isn't it a very good money management by knowing this in advance? Are we patient enough to get into the position? So these are the things that you may want to look into it. So when you found a stock, it doesn't mean that you will buy it straight away. You've got to use the technical analysis to help you to get in. And more importantly, helps you to know when you have to stop out if you are wrong. Make sense? So I hope that you enjoyed this and we will talk about the technical analysis in, next, in other videos. Uh, I will prepare for it, so be patient. And thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, observations, you can always send me an email. And of course, please visit my other websites and membership sites to check out my offers for you. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. This is Jack Wong. I'm signing off now and bye-bye.